150 cruise ship passengers trapped in Alaska and Carnival Cruise Lines raising the stakes in the mega cruise ship race. We will talk about both of these stories right after this. Hey folks, it's Mike from VentureCast here and coming at you with a couple of cruise news stories. I uh, hope you're having a good afternoon. And so the first story I'm going to touch on is uh, the announcement yesterday by Carnival that they had ordered uh, three new mega ships. And uh, we'll check out this uh, article uh, from Marine News. And basically, in the article, it's uh, talking about uh, the, the fact that Car uh, Carnival Cruise Line has ordered three new ships from Italian shipbuilder Finca Thierry. I hope I didn't butcher that too bad. Uh, each ship will be t uh, nearly 230 gross registered tons, uh, capacity for nearly 8,000 passengers, and it will have about 3,000 guest staterooms, and the of course, the new ships will be the largest in the fleet. They will also be LNG-fueled ships. And uh, apparently, according to this, uh, it's good, they will be delivered in the summers of 2029, 2031, and 2033. And this uh, basically, uh, it's in the wake of the historic cruise demand. And we've seen a, a race between lines, uh, different of the different cruise lines, to make bigger and bigger ships. So, uh, you know, as I was just saying, uh, if, if as we've been observing the uh, cruise lines out here and, and uh, what they're delivering as far as uh, new cruise ships, it just seems like the emphasis is being placed on having these uh, these mega ships, if you will. You know, we had. Uh, you know, Icon of the Seas from Royal Caribbean and MSC is also coming out uh, with some bigger ships. Uh, with, you know, the World America. Uh, we've also saw that Disney seems to be moving in that direction. And uh, Carnival also, Carnival also has been, they rolled out their XL class and that seemed to be an answer to uh, Royal Caribbean's Oasis class. Uh, and so. I did. I did. I don't. I'm not that surprised by this move because uh, you know, with with Royal rolling out the Icon, uh, this just seemed kind of a logical next step for Carnival if they're trying to remain competitive uh, in that space. But uh, it's going to be interesting. I you know, I'm constantly going back and forth on what my preference is, you know, the big ships or the small ships or even the midsize, you know, a lot of the midsize used to be the big ships, but uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, are you a fan of the mega ships? You want to see more of this? Uh, are you partial to the smaller ships? Uh, you know, let me know. All right. Story number two involves uh, cruise ship passengers trapped in Alaska. And you're probably asking yourself, you know, what in the world? How could you get trapped? You know, but uh, as we check out this uh, news article from the Chilkat Valley News, uh, basically what you had was about 150 passengers from two different ships. One was the Holland America Koningsdam. And the other uh, was from a princess ship. We didn't, didn't really have the name in there. And apparently they were in Skagway. And they were on an excursion on the uh, White Pass and Yukon Route Railway. Which is very popular amongst uh, cruisers. Alaska cruisers. And there was a rock slide that uh, you know, covered up the tracks. So the train could not return uh, to Skagway. Also, the rock slide affected uh, the uh, highway uh, between, uh, you know, Skagway and, and, uh, and further inland. And so basically there was a 50-mile stretch of the South Klondike Highway that was uh, covered up. And so basically what ended up happening was the U.S. Border Station and the Canadian Customs were also closed after the rock slide. And apparently this happened uh, somewhere around 5.30 p.m. Uh, Tuesday. 
Uh, so they took the passengers from the, the train, put them on buses, and decided since they could not get them back to Skagway, they would drive them several, several hundred miles up to Haines, Alaska. And, and the, you know, one of the, uh, the port managers down in Skagway uh, basically said this was unprecedented, something that really hadn't dealt with before. And so those ships are going to head up to Haines to retrieve their passengers. So uh, pretty, pretty disturbing. So yeah, I uh, I saw this uh, this this story uh, pop up, and you know I'm wearing my uh, White Pass uh, and Yukon Railway uh, uh, anniversary 125th anniversary hat, I believe it is. But uh, so yeah, I uh, was on the train. Uh, earlier this year back in April and you know it was it was a pretty enjoyable experience uh, there was only a we were the only ship in port that day so the, the train was not uh, to capacity so there's plenty of room on it I was really enjoyed I really enjoyed the experience it's very scenic uh, you're seeing wildlife you're seeing the nature and it and at that time of the year that we went it was covered in snow so just huge snow banks everywhere. But the reason I bring up my experience uh, is because we also experienced a rock slide on our uh, train ride. Uh, we we made it you know from Skagway all the way out because basically what happens in case you don't know is you you get on the train in Skagway they take you all the way up into the mountains and then there's kind of about a, like a halfway point where the the tracks kind of turn around so then basically basically it's just a big uh, a loop you know and so we got out halfway and and at some that there was a certain point where we went past to get to the halfway point i remember some passengers on the trains you know saying that they saw a rock slide behind us on the tracks and and you know i kind of i wasn't sure i was believing you know, I, I I just figured they didn't really see what they were thinking they saw, but yes, yeah, we got to the halfway point. The train stopped, and then an announcement was made by the uh, tour tour guide saying, "Hey, uh, the the train tracks are covered with rocks, and that they had to actually radio in and send another train with some um, some earth moving equipment to clear the tracks so we could head back to Skagway." And all in all, we were we were we were sitting there for roughly thirty minutes. Apparently, it wasn't that big of a rock slide. Must not have been as big as this one. But uh, you know, it just goes to show you you never know when you go on these excursions what to expect. And when I saw this story, I instantly thought, man, that happened that happened on our uh, train ride. So I don't know if this is like something that that they're going to have to look into. I mean, I, I don't know. Is, is this a new phenomenon? Has it always been happening? And we, maybe we, you know, it's just been small events like the one that I was on. I don't know. But uh, for all you, uh, you know, White Pass and Yukon Railway riders out there, uh, let me know. Have you been? Have you ridden the train? And when you rode it, did you have an experience uh, with rock slides? Uh, I'd be interested to know. Let's see, see what you guys think of that. But. Uh, All's well that ends well. Seems like nobody got hurt. Nobody lost their lives. Uh, they seems like they were put on buses to go meet their cruise ship. So I guess we should be thankful for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, interesting. You just never know. I mean, when you go when you go up to Alaska, you're in the. It's it's like a, a new frontier almost. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about these stories. If you like this kind of content, please consider hitting the thumbs up on your way out. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow, helps push the message out to the masses. I always appreciate anybody that watches, likes, subscribes, shares, comments. I uh, hope you're having a good day. Hope your week is going well. Hope you're enjoying whatever it is you're doing. And I will see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.